Welcome everybody, my name is Rick Utsu here with Airgun Web where we tell you the facts, not fluff. And today we're going to be doing a little maintenance on a little compressor here. This is the um, GX Pumps CS4, kind of a very cool compressor. I'll tell you a little bit about it and we're going to do some service on it. Let's get started. Okay, um, this is a short video. Um, what we've got going on here is this is a compressor that we bought um, specifically through our Patreon page and our Officers Club members. So you guys, thank you so much for um, starting. I mean, we got it early on, didn't have all the money yet, but we had people signing up and gave me the confidence to go ahead and pick this up. Now, why did I get this little compressor? Because I've got a bunch of little compressors. I got the Vever right back there and I've got a whole bunch of them. I've got the JTS and the Ready Air and all of these other things and those are all really cool and they do work to fill your air guns but what I was looking for was a compressor that could fill pony bottles, right? So um, I love the concept of having a little bottle, throw it in your backpack, take it to your stand. You can top your gun off in the middle of a hunting session. It's really, really awesome. Um, but the little compressors that are out they actually don't do that. They can't fill a pony bottle. If you can try, you may get it filled a couple times if you burn the doggone things up because they're designed to fill air guns, not bottles. Well, um, there have been some compact units like the Trail Chargers one from Air Guns of Arizona. They have, they have a unit that is very, very similar to this. Water-cooled, the whole deal, and it'll fill, uh, fill small pony bottles. It's great. Um, this unit here... What really got my attention is that it was right around like just under $600 shipped. And I'm thinking, okay, um, it fills pony bottles. Uh, that's cool. $600 is not that much more. It's right in that ballpark for a lot of the other little personal compressors. This is sitting in a pretty good spot if it works. So we got this. We've got a full review um, that's specifically right now. It's going to be coming out for uh, as exclusive content for our Patreon members and our Officer Club members. So if you guys want to know about those programs, check them out in the video description. We'll have them. And you can, you know, if you're interested in this compressor, just in general, you can pick it up on uh, Amazon. I have a link to it in the video description. It'll be an affiliate link. And if you buy it, it'll help me out. So I'll have that down there too. Um, but let's talk a little bit about why uh, I'm doing this today. A lot of the compressors, little portable ones, they're oilless, waterless. They're just air-cooled, right? Well, this one, because it's designed to run continuous for five hours or up to five hours, uh, it's actually got a water reservoir in it and it's got a radiator and it's got all kinds of stuff like that going on. Well, uh, we had some really cold weather, like really cold. Um, and rather than uh, just leave this out in the, in the shop, because my shop isn't climate controlled unless I'm down there to run the wood stove, uh, I don't want stuff to freeze. Um, we have had an issue in the past when I was doing service uh, for a, a compressor company and we had a whole crew here of folks working and we serviced a bunch of compressors got them all up and working and then and prepped them for fixing to get ready to you know go back out and we had a real bad cold snap and while we had drained them we did not blow all the water out so there's water in the radiators blew all the radiators and those we lost about three thousand dollars worth of inventory due to freezing. And that got me thinking, don't want to do that again. And certainly don't want to do that to this compressor. Um, so I pulled it out of the cold, got it in here and I saw, and I thought, you know, what I've used in the past on the big cage compressors, and I have a couple down at the range that I kind of rotate in and out just to, uh, just to see how they're going to do long-term. Um, but I use uh, RV antifreeze. Um, and I don't know if that's the best stuff. There may be some other options. If you guys have some stuff you want to share or some suggestions, put it in the viewer comments, right? Uh, but I, I run RV antifreeze because if it'll go in my RV, in my you know potable water system, and not kill you, I mean, not, you got to flush your system, right? Okay, so you're not going not gonna to drink it. But the point is, is that it's not harmful uh, and it's not going to hurt your, your system, not going to hurt your, your plastic piping and all that other stuff. So I thought... If there's anything I'm going to use, let's give that a shot because that may be that may be the ticket to really giving us 
um, uh, an option to keep these things from freezing in cold weather. So what I got here, um, we're gonna drain this with what it shipped with stuff in it, and I've, I put some distilled water in it as well. Um, but we're gonna drain this, and then we're gonna replace it. And I've never done that before, so it's kind of a new, new thing, and I'm doing it right along with you. So we've got an overhead camera, we've got a little camera over there, and we've got this camera. And we've got some new gear, by the way, uh, some new um, video gear that we're working with. So hopefully this will, hopefully this will work out pretty cool. Um, all right, so I've got this. We're going to open this up and pull the other stuff out. We also need to uh, run it and try and get the water that's in the system out. Um, just in general, the way this works, it would be nice if they actually... Uh, had a model that had the converter built in. I'll tell you, this is a good two times heavier than your normal compressors. Uh, this size, it's beefy. It's got a upgraded motor and this will actually go to 5,800 PSI instead of 4,000. So yeah, this is a, this is a beefy unit. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on. And that's going to get the system running. We should see get this off this this little top piece is hand tight so you shouldn't have to use a wrench and you can see the water's moving in there so I'm gonna drop this in we're just gonna pull the water out I don't know how much is in the system I don't necessarily want to run it dry okay it's still flowing so we still got a little left in there So that is, that's what we got, not a lot. Um, since it's still flowing and it looks kind of dirty, um, I'm gonna go get some of the antifreeze. We're gonna put that in there. Um, okay, it's outside, I gotta go grab it. And then we'll put that in there, we'll, float, we'll flush it. And then we'll just pull out and flush and pull out and flush because I don't wanna let it run dry because I've had issues with this type of system before. If it's dry, dry, sometimes there's a little impeller that's running all that. Sometimes that can cause a problem and you got to take it all apart and kickstart it. I don't want to do that. So we still got some fluid flow and let me go get the antifreeze. I'll be right back. So this again is for your RV when you're winterizing it. And yeah, it helps keep your system from freezing up on you. So I'm going to pull some water or pull some antifreeze out of here. And we're going to put some back into the system here. Okay. That is just about full. Now I put about a hundred milliliters um, and that's about right so I'm gonna pull that out and we're gonna put some fresh in again so I'm gonna pull out a hundred yep, I can maybe pull a little bit more Put another 100 in there, and that'll call it done. All right. And there she is. She's done. She's still flowing. And that should protect it. I have not had this stuff freeze in my other in my other compressors. They all are working good. So that should get us ready uh, for cold weather. And 
you know, when the summer hits, if you want to pull that out and replace it with distilled water, that's fine. And again, if there's another mixture um, that you guys know of, I know that like the Omega compressors, Air Guns of Arizona used to ship a little packet of some additives and stuff. Not quite sure what all that stuff was. We can turn this off now. Um, but I'm not sure what all those, you know, what all the ingredients were. But if you guys happen to have a suggestion on what might be a better way of doing this, let me know. Because I'm just kind of sharing with you guys what I do to help my stuff from getting ruined in the cold. Uh, and if you want to know more about this compressor, we've got our full review that's going to be coming out pretty soon. You can check that out. Um, if you're a Patreon member or if you're part of the Officers Club, you can check it out. We'll have it. And eventually, after we have that out for a while, I'll, I will be bringing a video out here on YouTube about this compressor. I want to make sure we take care of our paid members first, right? Um, yeah, so that's going to be it, guys. If you have any questions, put them in the, you know, in the viewer comments. I'll do my best to, to answer them for you. But uh, yeah, really cool little compressor. And now it's ready for cold weather usage. Um, so I can leave it down at the range. I don't have to keep remembering to bring it in out of the cold. It can just stay out there. And it'll be ready for me when I need to go down there and fill my little pony balls. So that's going to be it for now, guys. My name is Rick here with Airgun Web, where we tear the facts, not fluff. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.